Okay, so it's time to move on to how InDesign handles photographs and graphics. Uh, how do you bring those in? And uh, how does InDesign um, manage and handle them? Uh, it's a little tricky, uh, a little different than what you might experience in bringing photos into Microsoft Word or um, even Paint or something like that. Uh, so uh, I'll guide you through it. We'll figure it out. Most of the time when you bring a photograph or an image in, you use a command that you find underneath the file menu called place. For the record, you can place Word documents. It's another way to bring text in, but uh, copy and paste, as we've discussed in previous videos, works great as well. But when it comes to bringing in photographs or graphics, this is your place to go. File menu and place. And here we are inside our InDesign materials folder and we're going to bring in one of these graphics. Let's start with the Bruce Lee JPEG and say open. Okay, so the first thing you want to notice is that you probably have a thumbnail um, of your graphic or uh, photograph that's sort of stuck to your cursor. And the first thing I want you to do is just single click somewhere. This will drop the photograph onto the page uh, in its native size, its native resolution. I mean, this is how big the photo really is, pixel to pixel. Uh, dots per inch, this is the biggest that you really should use it. Now we're going to play with this and make it quite big, which is kind of a no-no. Well, it's totally 100% a no-no. In, uh, in, in a real world situation, you'd be receiving some very good, high quality images, potentially from a um, stock website where you've purchased them or from an actual photographer or designer who's made that material for you or you've taken the photo yourself and the quality should be huge. It is a bit of a warning sign if this photo is so small that it's nowhere near to the size you want to use it um, at, that is, an, that is a warning sign. Stop. Don't use it. You definitely cannot take a photo that's really small and stretch it out to be huge and expect the quality to be professional looking. It will look grainy. So uh, let's undo that until we get back to pasting our photo in. The last time we single clicked and dropped it in like this, we're not going to do that this time. This time we're going to click and hold the mouse button down and drag this picture out so that it's quite big. We are breaking our own rules. You really shouldn't make a small photo huge, but you can see that uh, we'll get by, at least for today, just to uh, learn and experiment. Um, here's our photo and it's full size, and we want to understand how um, this uh, photo will work in InDesign. So as you can see, you can move the photo around pretty easy click and hold and drag on it at this time you don't want to double click if you double click this can make some very strange things happen which can be very confusing first time so we're gonna undo that don't double click make sure you single click to select it and then click and hold to move it okay if you're using CS6 you might see some little circles in the center of your photo for now avoid clicking on those. Just click and hold anywhere except those circles in the middle and move your picture around to whatever you want. Okay. What if we want to resize this photo? Well, let's undo that or delete it. Perfect. And let's place it again. File, place. And we'll select the Bruce Lee photo again. And we will click and drag it out to just a small size so that we can easily understand how photos work in InDesign. Let's make it about this big and let go. Now, the first thing you're going to notice after moving the photo is that if you want to resize the photo by grabbing the corner, it doesn't do anything. What it did was crop the photo and cropping is that easy in InDesign. There is no crop tool. So cropping is easy. You simply resize this box. And the result is that you can crop very easily.
Okay, let's undo that and we'll bring it again. File place, just because it's easier to do that than to fix it. And let's click and drag it out and let go. What if you do want to resize it? Meaning, what if you want the content and the frame, the box, to resize together? All you have to do is hold the control key down. Hold down the control key, then grab the corner, resize, and voila, now it works as you would expect. Click, drag it out. Both get larger together, frame and content. Now you'll notice that if you keep the control button down and then make the box, the frame, much different than its original size, you can see that the content can be squished, stretched, skewed, whatever you want to call it, so that it's really not a good look for any photo or graphic to be stretched, to be changed from its left and right aspect ratio. It's very rarely is this ever a good idea. So how do we avoid that? How do we lock that down so that we can't mistakenly stretch a photo? Because you could think you're doing it perfect, but you've stretched the photo just subtly and it will look different. So there are ways to fix that, but it's quicker for now to just go delete and go to file and place it again. So let's place it again. Bruce Lee, open, and let's put it back on our page again. What we've learned is that we hold control if we want to resize it. I'll undo that. And if you don't hold control, it's crop. That's it. Hold control if you want to resize the frame and the content. Don't hold control, control and you're cropping. Undo that. If we want to restrain the relationship between width and height, there's another button. So let's hold control because we know we want to resize, not crop. And let's also hold shift. So now we're holding two buttons, control and shift. And now we're going to grab that bottom corner or any corner really and resize. What you'll notice is that you can't change the relationship of width to height. You can't make it squished or stretched like we were doing earlier. It's locked. You can only make it bigger or smaller within the restrain of that relationship of width to height. This is perfect. It means that you can't mess up the photo or image by squishing it or stretching it. So we're holding control to lock uh, the resizing ability and holding shift to lock the aspect ratio. So that's your tip. If you just need a quick tip, if you want to resize images after you've placed them in InDesign, just hold control and shift. Okay, so let's make with that new skill, let's make Bruce Lee big enough that he will fill the whole page. And we're going to move, click and hold, don't double click. And we're going to position him so that he fills the whole page. And it's actually preferable to go outside of the page ever so slightly. So I'm going to use the cursor keys, the arrow keys on your keyboard, and just press up a little bit to position the photo ever so slightly outside of this black line which is the edge of the actual page where our document in the physical world will really finish or edge that's where it will be cut or trimmed by the printing company when it gets printed out and you can see it's not quite reaching the bottom so hold control hold shift and make the picture a little bit bigger again and then what's happening is that this photo is now bleeding as they say off the edge of the page and that's a good thing it means that when it goes to print if the cutting that's happening inside the machines is just off ever so slightly microns off of that little black line you won't get any tiny bits of white fluff or any tiny bits of the original color of the stock paper showing you'll just get photo right off the edge it's called bleeding it's a good thing the pros do it so should you okay so we made Bruce Lee the right size if you wanted to crop him right here to bring this in just for good housekeeping we just resize it without holding anything so don't hold control don't hold shift just grab the edge of the frame and bring in a little bit and remember we're bleeding on all sides okay let's bring in one more photo just to make sure that we're nailing in this concept file place and let's bring in the dragon bg 
JPEG, JPEG and say open and we're going to click and drag. So what we have is a very nice textured background. And to be sure you fully understand the concept of how photos and images are handled in InDesign, we'll just do a little bit more playing with this and then we'll move on. So remember that we understand that we have to hold control if we want the content to resize. If we don't hold control, all we're doing is cropping. You can see that I could, for example, crop just this one circular pattern in this design. There we go. Perfect. And then if I wanted to resize it and have the content come along for the ride, I have to hold control. Let's also hold shift because I don't want to mess up that perfect circle. Click and hold the edge, resize it, and there you go. Now it's getting grainy, but that's understandable. We've made it way bigger than it's intended to be at this point. But we've cropped it, and then we've held control to resize the content. So what's happening here is that we have two things, a frame and the picture within the frame. For example, if I double click, I get a different color border on the outside of this frame. And if I now move this, look what's happening. I'm moving the content independent from the frame. Think of it like if you saw a picture inside a frame on your mantle and the picture had just fallen down inside the frame. And you would have to take the frame apart and reposition the photo and then put the frame back together again. It's the same idea. There's two different components. There's the actual frame itself, which you can resize. And within it is the content, which can also be resized. So they're two separate things. This is really messed up right now. It's easy enough to fix it, but this allows you to see how these two elements are working. Most of the times people don't really fool around with photos in this way, but it lets you see and understand fully how images are handled. You've got a frame, a box that holds, contains, that manages the photo. And then within it, you have that content. You see, I can even delete. I can delete the content, but the frame still remains. So you can see how separate they are, two independent things. Okay, so let's work with these a little bit. Now you can see that when I originally brought this photo in, it covered over everything else I was doing. It's on top of it. And as we discussed in earlier videos, this is an arrangement situation. If I was to right click on the Bruce Lee photo and say, arrange and then say send to back most of my problems are solved but let's talk about a more strategic way to use InDesign in particular to use the layers functionality in InDesign in working with photos let's select the Bruce Lee photo and we're going to cut it not delete I want you to control X meaning cutting it okay control X and then I want you to go to the Layers palette. Open up the Layers palette. It's over on the right. It's our first time talking about it. And you'll notice there's only one layer. This means everything is on one layer. If you want to see this, use the Toggle Visibility eye. Click on that. You'll see everything's disappearing and reappearing. Now, let's add another layer. Layer 2. There's nothing on Layer 2 right now. It's invisible. But there's lots of stuff on layer one. So let's rename them to make this a little easier. We're going to call this text, etc. Because there's some text on here. And there's some colored boxes. I'm going to line here as well. Then we'll go to layer two. And we're going to call this background images. Perfect. Okay. Now let's drag the background image to the bottom of the layers palette. So we've got a text layer on top. We've got a background images layer on bottom. You can arrange any layer in a stack of a bunch of layers just by grabbing it, dragging it down, and putting it in between any other layer you want. And you can delete layers. Don't need layer three. Don't need layer four. I've got a text layer that I've moved to the top and a background images layer which I've moved to the bottom. There's nothing on this layer and everything on this layer. Now remember that we cut the Bruce Lee photo 
and it was on the text layer. So, in order to work on a particular layer, you need to select it so that it's a bluish gray. Not text, but the background images layer. Make sure that you've highlighted it so it's got this bluish gray highlight. And let's lock the text layer. Locking is right here in this empty space. Click there and lock the text layer. That way we can't mess it up by mistake. Keeps all these objects and elements safe and secure. And confirm that the background images layer is selected, like a light gray. And then click out in the empty space. You can even close the layers palette if you want right now. And I want you to do a control V. And this will paste the Bruce Lee photo onto that separate layer. Let's go back to the layers palette again for a little explanation. So now we have two layers. I've turned them both off here. The bottom layer, background images, it has the Bruce Lee photo. And the second layer has all the text and some of the decorations and ornaments that we may have in here as well. Okay. So, so that it's easy to work with, let's just for a bit turn the visibility off on our text layer and let's bring in our red patterned background graphic and we'll close the layers palette down to make it easy. Um, just to confirm, we are still on the background layer. It is selected. The background images layer is the one we want to work on. It's highlighted in this grayish blue and the text layer is locked. Let's go place. Now, um, before we go to place, little reminder, if this is selected, that's a bad thing. Make sure nothing's selected before you go to place. If you have something sitting out here, like a text box, and it's currently selected, meaning it's the last thing you clicked on, and you go to file place, there's a potential that it will try to place that object that you select into this existing box and it can cause a real pain uh, and frustration for people. So just be remember as we've talked to uh, talked about in the past to always deselect by clicking out in the empty space so that nothing's selected when you go to do something new like file place. It's just good practice. Okay, file place it is. Go to the file menu, choose place. Let's choose the dragon BG JPEG. Say open. And this will give us an opportunity to flex our muscles in how we understand how photos work in InDesign. So let's click and um, drag. Actually, let me show you this first. I'll undo this for a second. If I single click anywhere, you can see that this photo is huge. And that's what we're looking for. We want to see photos that are big like this. So this means the photo's got a lot of pixels. It's very high quality. It can be used very big or quite small, but it shouldn't be used any bigger than its maximum size, which you can see right there, which is pretty darn good. Okay, so let's undo that. And instead, let's click and drag. So we're gonna start just outside so that our bleed is taken care of. We're gonna click and drag until the photo goes right past the bottom of the page. So from the very top to the very bottom, including some bleed space. Remember to go past the edge of the page so that things print really good when your stock, your um, paper is cut for you by the printing company along that black line. Okay, we've pasted this in. That's good. Let's resize it a little bit. How do we do that? Hold control, remember, and hold shift so that things don't get squished. And make it a little bit smaller. Perfect. Let go of control and shift. And now let's crop. Let's bring this edge in so it's just a nice decorative sidebar. And let's bring this edge in. So that, remember to bleed, just off the edge a little bit. Oh, that's not quite right. No, actually it is. That's just the white edge of the Bruce Lee photo underneath. So we're bleeding this sidebar out. And that looks good. So we've put this in. It looks really nice. Now what if you want to position it differently within the frame? We kind of know how to do that. Let's double click on it. And then with the hand, we can move the image over inside of the frame, just like we were looking at it through a window. This way we can choose whatever aspect of the pattern that we want to be front and center or really framed well within the frame, quotation marks. <laughs> so that looks good. You can move it around within the frame, adjusting it accordingly. Kind of cool. Deselect, you can click out in the empty space and we're back to normal. If you want to have a look at it, as it will look when it prints instead of all these 
bleed out areas, press W, and there you go. That looks pretty slick. Very nice. And to really get a sense of where we're how we're doing, let's turn the text layer back on. So click on the layers palette and press on the little toggle visibility. Ooh, now that is starting to look like the real deal. Excellent. So let's stop there and in the next video we'll start talking about text wrapping and also using the pen tool to make different and interesting shaped text boxes.